الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم إن شاء الله tonight we're going to take a new lesson from the aqidah classes that we have every Monday. So basically this book which is called Sharh al-Sunnah lil Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah not only it is a book of aqidah but it's also a book of manhaj. And if someone asks what is the difference between aqidah and manhaj, anybody knows what's the difference between aqidah and manhaj? What's the difference? Okay. What is what is the manhaj? Like, can you explain? Methodology, like how we believe in. That's it. It's more than that. It's more than that. So. <clears throat> Al-Aqidah is basically the creed, the creed. The creed when it comes to, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to his names, his attributes. When it comes to Al-Qadr, the affairs of Al-Qadr. When it comes to the angels, the prophet and messengers. When it comes to the, the day of the judgment, right? When it, when it comes to the grave. When it comes to uh, paradise and hellfire. When it comes to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is aqidah. Anything has to do with your belief system, this is called aqidah. Right? The manhaj is the methodology how we understand the deen. For example, when it comes to an aqidah, the methodology the Prophet was upon and his companions. When it comes to an aqidah. For example, when it comes to the names and attributes of Allah, Al-Sunnah, they have a methodology that they follow. The methodology of Al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that we affirm to Allah what He affirmed to Himself in the Quran. And upon the tongue of His Messenger Muhammad in, in the sound hadith. Okay, this is in regards to Aqidah. Our methodology when we deal with the people of desires and the people of Bid'ah, Al-Sunnah, they have a methodology that they follow. When is their methodology? They don't argue with the people of desires. Right? Why? Because arguing with them will bring about shubuhat, doubt. Will cast doubt in the heart. And a person may get weak and may fall into their doubt and may get affected. And that's why they warn against sitting with the people of Ahlul Bida, the people of Desires and the people of innovation, you don't sit with them, you don't even greet them, especially if they are leaders, if they are callers. We don't, we avoid them, we don't argue with them. And also, we avoid them completely, we boycott them until they come back to the truth, until they come back to the way of the Sunnah and Jama'ah. A lot of people don't understand these principles, right? Many people don't understand. But alhamdulillah, the, the people of the sunnah, they, they understand because these are principles. Are, these are principles of our manhaj, of our methodology, how we deal with these individuals. Likewise, when it comes to the da'wah ila Allah, calling to Allah, and the sunnah, they have a methodology. That, they start with what? Tawheed. Right? Do they start with politics? No. They start with tawheed. They teach the people tawheed. Because when the people know tawheed, then the ummah will be, will be what? United. Everyone will be on the same belief, right? The, the, everyone will be on the same belief and on the, on the same page, and that way the ummah will be united. But when you have different sects in the ummah, then you're going to have division, right? And that's why the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, قيل من هي يا رسول الله قال من كان على مثل ما أنا عليه اليوم أصحابي he said صلى الله عليه وسلم that my ummah my community will be divided into 73 sects all of it will be in the fire except one he didn't say all of it will be in Jannah except one he said all of it will be in the fire except one means the 72 they are what deviant sect a deviant sect so there's only one jama'ah. 
There's only one jama'ah. And then he gave the answer. He did not leave the matter ambiguous just like that. And we understand that. Who is this jama'ah? He said, the one who is upon. What I am upon today and my companions. So whoever is upon the way of the Salaf al-Salih, the way of the righteous predecessors, the way of the Prophet his companions, the tabi'een, those who came after them and followed them in goodness, and those who came after them in goodness. So those are the Salaf. Those are the Salaf al-Salih. So now, why do we follow Sheikh bin Baz, Sheikh al-Uthimin, Sheikh Salih al-Fuzan, Sheikh Salih al-Hidan, Sheikh Rabi'a, Sheikh Rabi'a al-Jabri? Why do we follow the scholars? Because they are the ones that follow what? The Sahaba. They follow the Prophet ﷺ. follow the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They follow the way of the companions, radiallahu anhu. They follow the tabi'een, tabi'een. They take from them. So that's why we take from them. And we don't follow anyone else except those who are upon what the Prophet ﷺ was upon and his companions were upon. This is our manhaj. This is our methodology. We don't take knowledge from anyone else except those who are upon what the Prophet was upon and his companions. And that's why Al Imam ibn Sirin, rahimahullah, he said, In the al ilm deen, fanduru amman ta'khudu deenakum. He said, Indeed, this knowledge is your religion. So check out the one you take your religion from. Very important. So you have to know that this person is, his aqidah is correct. Right? He's not upon the aqidah of the khawarij. عقيدة في المعتزلة عقيدة في الجهمية عقيدة في الأشاعرة عقيدة في الكلابية عقيدة في الصوفية هذا ده ده. You have to make sure that this person's aqidah is correct This is number one And also that his methodology is correct He's not following a methodology other than the methodology of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and his companions رضي الله عنهم وارضاهم It's very important, إخوان that we check a person before we take knowledge from we make sure that this person is upon what the Prophet was upon and his companions. Because he said, وسلم, and my ummah will be divided into 73 sects, all of it will be in the fire except one. He said, Which one is this? Um, Messenger of Allah. He said, The one who is upon what I'm upon today and my companions. That's the answer. And inshallah, after this, I wanted to give you an introduction before we start. That way we know what we're doing because some of you, you were not with us from the beginning. You know? طيب قال المؤلف رحمه الله والرسم أعلام الضلالة قد, قد بقي منهم قوم يعملون بها ويدعون إليها لا مانع يمنعهم ولا أحد يحجزهم عما يقولون ويعملون The author رحمه الله الإمام البربهاري He said And the people of misguidance The people of misguidance Like the people who are upon misguidance Because a certain time the people of misguidance, they, have, they are in authority. You know, they have the authority. Like, for example, those at the time of Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, they were in the ministry. They were the ministers. The chief judge was from them, or was from the Mu'tazila. You see. And the Muslim ruler, he sided with them. He sided with them. And he adopted their innovation, their wicked innovation, which is that the Quran is created. They said the Quran is not, is not the speech of Allah. It's created. They came up with this bid'ah. So at that time, Ahl Sunnah, they were weak. They were weak, Ahl Sunnah. Because the Mu'tazila, the Mu'tazila they, were, they were in, in authority. So they were testing the people. Testing the people. Only those who were firm, those are the ones that actually stood firm. But other than that, a lot of people, they were scared of the sword. They were scared to be die, you know, to die. Because they will, they will say, either you, you accept that the Quran is created, or we will kill you, or the prison, or the whip. So some of them, they were scared to be whipped. So they could not handle it, you understand. But Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, he did not. He was very firm, rahmatullahi alayhi. He was very brave. They whipped him. You know, he suffered a lot, Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah. And they put him in the prison, right? But he did not budge from his stance. Likewise, the people of the Sunnah, they should be like that. 
Because you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. Now, the people are going to say, you're extremist, you're this, you're that. So the people are going to speak, right? So you have to be firm. You have to be firm. You don't budge from the way of the, uh, of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. As long as you are upon that path, this is what matters. This is what matters. Because you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. The people of innovation, they're going to try to tarnish your image, image speak ill about you and, and stuff like that. Like, for example, Sheikh Muhammad Ma'duhab, rahmatullahi alayhi. If you go on the internet, right, you find so many bad stuff about the Sheikh, but who, who is it coming from? Either from the non-Muslims, which is not strange, right? Or from the, from the people of innovation, right? From the people of Bid'ah. They try to tarnish the image of the Sheikh. But when you look at what the Sheikh has authored, rahimahullah, you find out that these people, they, they are upon falsehood. They are upon falsehood. Because the Sheikh, he did not bring anything new. He's just bringing what is in the Quran, what is in the Sunnah of Prophet He's reviving the da'wah of the Prophet messengers. That's all he's doing. طيب, so, Imam al-Barbahari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that evil will not end. From the time Allah created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, evil been in, in existence, right? Till now. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created good and bad to test us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالْخَيْرِ وَبِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً And we test you with evil and good as a trial and tribulation. See? Because good, everybody will pass the test. Right? <laughs> everybody will pass the test when, something, when it comes to something good. Right? You're doing well. You're prosperous. You have money. You're comfortable. Everybody's happy with that. But when you get tested with poverty, Ah, now it's different, you see. You get tested with sickness. You get tested that Allah takes away one of your children, takes away your wife, your son, your dad, your aunt. This is not easy. Someone very close to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you in the deen also. He tests you. To see what you're going to do. As Allah said in the Quran, in Surah, in Surah Al-Ankabut, Alif Lam Mim, Ahasib Al-Nasu, Ayyutraku, Ayyakulu Amanna wa Hum La Yiftanu. Alif Lam Mim, do people expect that they would, just, they would just say, we believe and they will be tested? They will be left alone. No. You'll be tested. You will be tested. Because if there is no test, there is no benefit. There's no benefit. What's the benefit if there was no test? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in, in, the, in the same, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Look at this. We have indeed tested those who came before you. So that those who are truthful are distinguished from the liars. Those who are truthful are distinguished from the liars. Right now. Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan Fuzan, he said, فَلْيَبْقَ الْخَيْرُ وَالشَّرُّ الْإِبْتِلَاءِ وَالْإِمْتِحَانِ He said, evil and good will remain upon this earth. For what? He said, الْإِبْتِلَاءِ وَالْإِمْتِحَانِ For being, for being, for, for testing, for testing the people. It's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created evil, created good, so that he could test his slaves. لكن أحيانا ينتصر الحق ويظهر وأحيانا يظهر الباطل. And sometimes the good prevailed. And sometimes evil prevailed. Like in certain societies, you find that there is evil who prevail. People are corrupt. You know, there is a lot of murder. There is a lot of evil in that society. And subhanAllah, in other societies, you see that al khair, good prevails. You see that the people, they are upon good. 
they go to the masjid, they pray, and you see that the people give sadaqah, the people, they don't cheat, they don't deceive, and the like. Good people, security in that land, you can walk, you know, midnight. A woman can go out midnight, nobody would mess with her. Security, you know, good society. People don't steal, they don't lie, they don't backbite, they don't slander people and the like. You feel secure in that society. Likewise, when you go to certain communities, the people are upon the sunnah, upon the way of the salaf of salih. So subhanallah, you see that the khair, good, is prevailing, you know, unlike other areas where you find the people of bid'ah, they're predominant. So it's not the same. It's not the same. طيب. The Sheikh, he said, وَلَكِنَّ ظُهُورَ الْبَاطِلْ لَا يَسْتَمِرْ But the emergence of evil will not continue means it will stop. It will stop. أَمَّا الْحَقْ فَإِنَّهُ إِنْ حَصَلَ عَلَيْهِ مَا حَصَلْ فَإِنَّهُ يَعُودُ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ He said, as for the truth, even if the people of Bid'ah sometimes they have the upper hand and the like, in the end, the truth will come back and will emerge again. Now. And, Allah, and then the Shaykh, he mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And the outcome is for the pious. It's always for the pious. They are the one that you know, have an excellent outcome. The people who fear Allah, وَالْعَاقِبَةُ taqwa also. And the aqiba, the outcome, is for those who implement at taqwa Those who achieve at taqwa يَقُولُ الْإِمَامُ بْرُ الْقَيِّمُ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ وَالْحَقُّ مَنْصُورٌ وَمُمْتَحَنٌ فَلَا تَعْجَبْ فَهَذِهِ سُنَّةُ الرَّحْمَانِ الإمام Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said, وَالْحَقُّ مَنْصُورٌ وَمُمْتَحَنٌ He said that the truth is aided. The truth is aided. Means Allah will aid the truth. Right? الْحَقُّ مَنْصُورٌ And the truth is aided. وَمُمْتَحَنٌ And is also tested. How many people are tested with the truth and they leave it? SubhanAllah. Allah tests them with the truth. Comes to them. And they reject it. And you be tested. You're upon the truth. And you're tested. Now. He said, فَلَا تَعْجَبْ فَهَذِهِ سُنَّةُ الرَّحْمَانِ Do not be surprised. Because this is the way of Allah. The way of Allah when it comes to dealing with His creation. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not leave things just like that. The road is not paved up with the roses, as they say. You're going to encounter challenges and harm. So what, what the, the main thing is, what is more important is, as long as you are upon the truth, this is what matters. As long as you are upon the truth, this is what matters. قال المؤلف رحمه الله وَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَمْ تَجِئْ زَنْدَقَةٌ قَطْ إِلَّا مِنَ الْهَمَجِ الرَّعَاءِ أَتْبَعْ كُلَّ نَاعِقٍ يَمِلُونَ مَعَا كُلِّ رِيحٍ فَمَنْ كَانَ هَكَدَا فَلَا دِينَ لَهُ قال, قال الله وَمَا اخْتَلَفُوا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْعِلْمُ بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُمْ So the author, رحمه الله, he said no. He said no. That Heresy, you know heresy, right? Heresy, you know what it is, right? Like, uh, right? Uh, heresy is uh, hypocrisy, and uh, sometimes it could be apostasy. Like, it depends. Like, 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 heretics, you know the heretics. Yes, طيب زنادقة. طيب the Sheikh he said, a زندقة he said heresy. Is hypocrisy. وَهُوَ إِدْهَارُ الْإِيمَانِ وَإِبْطَانُ الْكُفْرِ 
And it is to manifest the iman upon the tongue and to hide the kufr in the heart. So basically hypocrisy. This is called zandaqa. فَالزَّلَادِقَ هُمُ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يُسَمَّوْنَ بِالْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي صَدْرِ الْإِسْلَامِ So الزَّلَادِقَ, the heretics, are those that were named to be hypocrites in the beginning of Islam. In the beginning of Islam, they used to call them zanadiqa. And zanadiqa means hypocrite, hypocrites. Because they manifest an iman, they may pray, they may pray with the believers and everything, but they are not believers. They hide kufr in their heart. May Allah protect us from that. وَيَعِشُونَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ And they, they live amongst the people. They live, they go to the masajid and they pretend that they are believers in the light. But the reality they are not. وَإِذَا سَنَحَتْ لَهُمْ فُرْسَةٌ ظَهَرَ شَرُّهُمْ وَكُشِّرَتْ أَنْيَابُهُمْ ضِدَّ الْحَقِّ وَأَهْلِهِ The Shaykh, he said, when this individual is hypocrite, he said, when the, when, when the opportunity presents itself, because they're looking for opportunities. May Allah protect us from, from them. So they're looking for opportunities. When the opportunity presents itself, he said the evil will prevail. For example, there was an individual, his name is Abdullah ibn Saba. Abdullah ibn Saba. Now when you look at the name, Abdullah, he said, this is a Muslim name, right? But was this man a Muslim or not? Anybody knows the history. He was a hypocrite. This man was a hypocrite. And what did he do? He wanted to tarnish Islam, the image of Islam, and he, wants to, he wanted to create fitna amongst the Muslims. So he's the one that started Shiism. You understand? And this man was a Jew, actually. He was a Jew. But he was not a Muslim. Even though he testified that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. But he was not a believer. He was a hypocrite. He hid al-kufr in his heart and he manifested the iman upon his tongue. And he started calling the people to Shiism. So he's the one that started creating fitna, turmoil, and sedition among the Muslims. So he was calling, the, what did he do? He went to Egypt. So he could not do anything in the Medina. Because in Medina, the Sahaba, they were there. You know, knowledge. You see, when people of knowledge are there, the people of Bid'ah, the people of, you know, the, the hypocrites, they, 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 they cannot do anything. You see, they cannot do anything. Because the soil is not fertile for them. So where is he going to go? He went to Egypt. He went to Egypt because there he, f- he found what he wants. He w- exactly. People were ignorant, laymen. They don't know. They, have, they don't have knowledge. They're emotionally driven. That's it. When someone is emotionally driven, he's very foolish because he doesn't have knowledge. Understand? So what he did, he started fitna. He said, look, guys, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he should be the one he should be the one to rule after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he is the, his cousin. And Ahl al-Bayt, the household of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they should have more precedence than anyone else. Ah, now he started the fitna. You see, this is how Shiism came about. And then the Shia until now they don't like Abu Bakr Siddiq, they don't like Umar, they don't like Uthman, they don't like our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. They curse them. They curse them. May Allah give them what they deserve. So, you see, this Jewish guy, Abdullah ibn Saba, he's the one that started Shiism. You see? So this man, he pretended to be a believer, but he was not. So now you know. So that's why these heretics are very dangerous. Because they change color. They're like chameleon. You know chameleon? They're like chameleon. They change color, camouflage. May Allah protect us from them. So they, they may come and pray with you and everything, but they are not believers. May Allah protect us. 
Like the Shia, the Shia, they have the same thing. They will come to the Masajid and the Sunnah, and he said, they will say, yeah, we are Ahlul Sunnah. But the reality, they're not. Because in the, in the Shi'i religion, it is permissible to lie. Yes, they call it taqiyya. You know, taqiyya, have you ever heard of this? Taqiyya. Taqiyya is like disguise. You can disguise yourself. It's permissible for you to disguise yourself. Basically, to lie. To be a hypocrite. You can do that. You see, because if he said, I'm Shi'i, everybody's going to say, wait a minute, you got to, how? Huh? And if the people start questioning them and things, they're going to feel uncomfortable, right? Unless he's coming to know the truth. That's a different story, but that's very hard to find. Yeah. So, these are as the, 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 the hypocrites. The Sheikh said, وَإِذَا سَنَحَتْ لَهُمْ فُرْسَةٌ دَهَرَ شَرُّهُمْ So when the, when, the, when the opportunity is presented to them, then their evil prevails. وَكُشِّرَتْ أَنْيَابُهُمْ And their canine become visible. What does he mean by that? That's it, they're ready to pounce at the, at the people. And, you know? Yes, they're growling at you now. Right. So they were kushirat and yabum did the haqwa ahli. And their canine they start, become visible against the truth and the people who carry it. Now they're growling at you. Because the people of the truth, what do they do? They expose them. So they don't like that. They don't like that. Kama wa majood fi zaman al an, as it is, he's present in our time. The Sheikh is talking about our time now. Because there are people like that. They're hypocrites. Allah protect us. And so, so the, the, the Imam al-Barbahari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he's saying that this trials and tribulation comes from the common folks, subhanallah. Comes from the riffraff. He called them a riffraff. Right? The scums and the riffraff. Because those guys, they're emotionally driven. And when someone is emotionally driven, there, he's like what? An insane person. Because he doesn't have any guidance. He doesn't have no methodology. So any fitna that comes, he gets swept away by it. He gets swept. He's like a feather in the air. So when the wind gets stronger, he's all over the place. That's why you see them, these people who are emotionally driven, they're like that. Subhanallah. You see them like in Mecca when they go perform Hajj. Well, we've seen them. Ibadah is not like that. Emotionally violent. They push everyone to get to the black stone. Subhanallah. Is this Ibadah? Or in a Rawda, a Rawda Sharifa. Men, women, everyone, they fight. Is this how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed the, the Ibadah? This is how the Sahaba did? No. They were very calm. You see, emotionally driven. That's why the ulama they say, Al-Awasif Awasif. They say emotions are storms. Huh. Emotions are what? Storms. Because storms, they are very wild and violent, right? Likewise, emotions. Because when, when, when people get you know, emotionally driven, they can do anything. They can start going out, they go outside, they start breaking cars, they start burning buses, going to the shop and looting, doing all kind of evil that you can think of. Because they're emotionally driven and they're not using their sense. And they're not guiding themselves with the guidelines of Islam. The Quran was Sunnah and what the Prophet and his companions were upon. They're not doing that. They're not looking into that. So the, the matter becomes chaotic, very chaotic. And Islam is not a religion of chaos, it's a religion of order. 
organization is a religion of peace, alhamdulillah. But when you have different sects, they tarnish the image of Islam. Like those extremists that blow up and kill. No, the kuffar, they look at us like bloodthirsty. Look at you people. Look what they do. You see? Even the Hindus now, now they're, 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 they're attacking Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, insulting him, and insulting our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. The people of India, they should be wise also. Should be wise. You should not give them an opportunity to kill more of you and bulldoze your, your, your houses and all this. Don't give them that opportunity. Because you're a minority. You have to use wisdom. But the people, because they're emotionally driven, yes. Don't be like that. Go by the kitab was sunnah. Yeah, if they, if they speak here about Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, you can correct them. Tell them, no, that's not true. What you, what you hear from the media is not, is not true. And you correct them. That's it. This is all what you have to do. Allah will protect his deen. You don't have to worry about that. The Shaykh said, all this trial and tribulation comes from a riffraff. The people who don't have knowledge, those are the ones, like for example, when you, when you look at Muslim countries, Libya for example, Libya. Libya was one of the best Muslim countries. People used to travel there, they used to, they, they used to go to Libya to live, to work there and live. They used to make a lot of money. You know all that, right? Many of you know. Allah ikhwan. Libya was one of the best Muslim countries. Muslims used to go there and make money. They lived a very good life. You know, the government, the Libyan government under Ma'mar al-Qaddafi, the one who was killed, do you know that medical was free, dental was free, and the government, they will give you money from the oil. What else do you want? Does America do this? No. Europe, where do you find this? Money anywhere. Juan. And yet, the people, they were not happy with this. What did you do? They revolted. Okay, now you revolt against the leader. Now you, you have given an opportunity, go an opportunity for the kuffar to come and take him down. Right? And then he did. That's exactly what they did. He was killed. Now they still have turmoil in the country. You see? They're not done yet. It's still tribal war. You see? Iraq. Look at Iraq. Look at Syria. I have seen, Ikhwan, I have seen Syrian kids begging. Allah. Very, very sad to see it. Allah. Because people, they don't listen. They follow their desires. He said, He said, as for the people of knowledge, those who are well grounded in knowledge, then they follow the truth. Ah. You see the difference? They follow the kitab or sunnah. They're not emotionally driven. What does Allah want us to do? We're going to go to the Quran. We're going to go to the hadith. This is what we do. The riffraff, what do they do? They follow their desires, emotionally driven. They're like storms. You know? They're following their emotions. And that's why they're destroyed. You see? They're destroyed. Before you know it, the bloodshed, fitna. It comes all from these guys. Scholars say, don't do this. You, you go against the fatwa of the sheikh. And you go and you do against what the Sheikh to told you. And then you regret in the end. You regret because you're very foolish. You're like a, a moth. You know, moth, when he sees the, 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 the light and he, he rushes into the light and he gets burnt. Like that. Because the Sheikh, if he said, don't do this, he knows exactly what he's saying. Because it's coming from the Quran and the Hadith. And that's why Sheikh Al Islam. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, 60 years under the rulership of a tyrant is better than one day without authority. 
Allahu Akbar. Look at this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again. He said 60 years under the rulership of a tyrant is better than one day without, without any authority. You understand? Because even when you have a tyrant, people, they can go about their job. The people, they can go to, to their business. You know, life goes on. You have order. You have security. You see? But when you don't have a ruler, what's going to happen? Chaos. A robbing. People have guns. They, they come and, and rob you and kill you. Right? Take your wealth. Now they're doing it. You have authority and they're doing it. What about when you, when you don't have no authority? It's going to get worse. Juan. You see? Al Sunnah, they speak with wisdom. And that's why Imam Sheikh al Islam bin Taymiyyah, we will conclude by this. Imam Sheikh al Islam, he said something very beautiful about Ahl al Sunnah. He said, Ahl al Sunnah, A'raf al Nasi bil Haq. Wa Arham al Nasi bil Khalq. Allahu Akbar. He said, Ahl al Sunnah, they are the most knowledgeable when it comes to the truth. They know the truth more than anyone else, the people of the Sunnah. And they are the most compassionate when it comes to the creation. Allahu Akbar. These are Al-Sunnah. They are the most knowledgeable when it comes to the truth. But also they are most compassionate when it comes to the people. Because they know they're miskeen. They're ignorant. They don't know. Understand? So they're very compassionate towards them. You know, they're very patient with them. They teach them. They guide them and all that. But yet, some of them are fools. Foolish. They don't listen to the advice of the ulama. And in the, in the end, they suffer the consequences. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all al-ilm al-nafi'a, al-amal salih, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim.